You go in there. Up. Alright guys, we are back and over the weekend my boiler broke so I decided to change it and I went with the only one that the Home Depot locally had and it was a tankless water heater. They did have the standard conventional water heaters but I got a tankless gas water heater and I spent uh, two days buying brass fittings and uh, connecting this thing and I kept it brass because the copper that they have the schedule that they have at home depot is really really thin like it's just so thin like i i, I didn't want to solder it uh, i didn't even want to use it uh, i like keeping everything original uh there's a local sh uh, supply plumbing supply nearby and they helped me with the fittings i could just walk right over and switch it if I wanted a 45 or a 90. Uh, they had everything, the one inch, they had half an inch. And while I was at it, I always wanted to, because usually you never put, no one puts pressure gauges or, or temperature gauges on, on pipes, especially for residential. So I decided I got these really nice temp gauges uh, from a company, Clifton. And they're just strap on. They're amazing. Amazing. Boom. You just strap it on. You don't even have to put a T. Uh, the, these are the pressure gauges. This is for the cold water. And then this is for the warm water. Uh, I got these just so I have an idea. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, you can tell whether the water is running uh, when you have a shaky needle or a steady needle. Right now the needle's really, really just a tiny bit shaky because I did put a circulator, a water circulator, um, with a crossover valve in the bathroom the furthest away so that there is constant hot water. A lot of people complain that it takes too long for the hot water from the tankless unit to the bathrooms, it takes a real long time. So. I put a taco, standard taco, uh, water circulating pump from the Home Depot. And I ordered the crossover valves on Amazon. Uh, just some pretty, like, it was a plastic standard. There's not many out there. but And I also added, I know, I added this on the hotline. Um, a expansion tank. It's a two-gallon uh, with a little valve, so it's easy to change i added it because since i have the water circulator pump there is a check valve that i didn't want to remove on there because it, i feel that it's the best thing to do is not to remove it it will help circulate the water better uh and not and just get everything flowing sort of in one direction and not cause any turbulence to go back so I thought a, uh, an expansion tank was needed, but there's no room really. Like I, I could have tried to tee it off here somewhere, um, but I didn't want it between the furnace, the exhaust. Uh, I didn't want any water, honestly, on top of the furnace, just for safety, because God forbid you get a leak, then you got this huge pile of s steam. You know, you, you would suffocate yourself for trying to come in here and stop the water especially when all the water valves are here and the gas valves are here so that is it and now i will show you we will open it up uh, i just had it, got it running show you how to set it up the instructions are terrible that come from the kit and also it comes it needs its own power 12 volts i'm not sure why they couldn't just fit like a little transformer or a step down near the control board to power this thing up maybe like power through the cable itself it's really simple straightforward it's a really great feature and i uh, just love being able to control things from your phone this is a must-have okay so we opened up the water heater we ran the uh, water center with a little like i don't know an, uh, it's like an extender and the module basically the control board i guess will mount right here and those two screws uh, and then this was tricky you have to find its four port and it was right here 
I kept thinking it was one of these. Uh, maybe pull this one out, but it's right there. Uh, I found it on the wire diagram, which is in the back of the cover. The water sensor tip, right? They they make you lock it down, but I'm just gonna pull it out a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure how they want this. Uh, I don't know why they have this little cap. It's got like four wires just open. But I'll keep it with the cap on. I feel like me, maybe it's, you know, I feel like something flatter so that as soon as like a leak occurs, it shuts down the machine. But something like this is, you know, you would have to get like a quarter inch of water for something to trigger these. All right, so we got it connected. There was one uh, came with this little jump. Uh, the manual said it was for the outdoor units, so we won't be using that. And uh, now all that's left is to power the unit up and set it up on uh, the app. Okay, guys, so we're wrapping up. Uh, it was really straightforward water center around the back uh, all the way to the back of the board this uh, gets screwed in from these two screws on the bottom uh, this little phone wire uh, basically gets screwed onto the Wi-Fi unit and then this the translator cable uh, the small end gets plugged in here, and then this four pin gets right under here. It's a little hidden, but yeah, you'll find it. Uh, <coughs> excuse the mess, I haven't mounted it, or uh, the drain for the condensator. And uh, now we're gonna basically close the back up. It was a really simple you know, Wi-Fi setting a procedure and it works great. You can control it from your phone anywhere and uh, sends you alerts. If there's gas leaks or water leaks, it shuts down the unit right away. This unit's pretty good. I mean, this is the controller it comes with. It's got just magnets. Just put it up there because it was convenient.